One day when I was visiting my cousin's house, I found a peculiar item on their desk. A pixelated flower pot from Minecraft. It was a gift to my cousin from his girlfriend, and when I looked into it, I realized a lot of people make these flowers as a gift idea, painting and gluing wooden blocks for a creative, cute, heartwarming, and sincere gift. I wanted one, so I decided to ask my girlfriend for one as well. Oh, oh wait, that's me. Well, anyways, today we're making Minecraft flower pots bigger and better than anyone else using 3D printing. They are much less tedious than gluing some wood blocks together, and since they're 3D printed, it means you can make one as well as long as you have a 3D printer. But even if you don't have a 3D printer, I am selling them on my Etsy shop, which is linked in the description below. Buying one does support the channel and might be just what you need. These flower pots are such a unique and wonderful decoration, especially because they won't die. There's a Minecraft flower or plant out there that will fit your taste for sure. From the nasty nether roots to the new torch flower, anything is really possible. So let's start crafting. Now that I got your attention somehow, let me talk trash on wood blocks. Sure, it's a more simplistic method of making Minecraft items, and somehow got this guy a million views. But they aren't ideal. For one, they are often imperfectly cut, causing gaps and disalignment inside your build. Second, they are heavy as hell. Compared to the volume in 3D printing, it means that wood blocks would take a lot more fall damage. And third, wood blocks are expensive. I think I'm actually gonna spend $30 on wood just for this. It really isn't efficient to make a box out of wood blocks and then paint it. But honestly, I have to say that wood blocks aren't the worst idea. It's a really good way of making pixel art without having to have a lot of skill. You can do it if you want, but I have one last reason why you shouldn't use wood blocks. And that's because they don't actually make proper Minecraft flowers. Like, look at this rose from Minecraft. Oh wait. Look at this rose from Minecraft. You may not have even noticed it or processed it in your mind, but it's a flat texture. Which means all of this wood block nonsense doesn't even make any sense. This voxel style is inaccurate, and neither is this flat style that this official company sells on Amazon. A proper and accurate Minecraft flower would look something like this. And that way, we can make the best Minecraft flowers than anyone else on the internet. So how are we going to make them exactly? Well, as I said before, we're going to use a 3D printer, which is really good at making weird complex shapes like this. But that means we have to 3D model the flower. And obviously, 3D modeling isn't as simple as just putting some blocks on a grid like in Minecraft. Oh wait, it is. Welcome to Tinkercad a program built for the same age range as Minecraft players, 4 to 65 years old. Tinkercad is a free online 3D modeling software, which is as simple as it gets. It's just like Minecraft or wood blocks. You just place blocks wherever you want in order to design something. Let's try to design a cornflower similar to my cousin's girlfriend's present. Snapping to the grid helps a lot with designing pixel art things like this, and you can always copy paste this cube to make some more. That was simple enough, and now using the whole feature, you can subtract material to make the pot. And doesn't it just look wonderful? Okay, well, it kind of looks like shit. I mean, this is the most accurate Minecraft flower, but if we 3D printed this, how would we paint it? At least with wood blocks, you know where the pixels are, but with 3D printing, you don't. And I actually do like the 3D effect that wood blocks give, even if it's inaccurate. So how are we going to achieve that? 
Well, instead of just 3D modeling inside Tinkercad, you can open up the original cornflower texture from a default texture pack. Then we can divide up similar colored pixels into different layers. I divide them up based on shades, so the darker colors I color black, and the lighter colors dark gray, you know the deal. And since Minecraft pixel artists actually do their job and don't use too many colors, you can usually divide them up into only four layers for flowers. With all these layers, you can export them into an image file like a PNG, and then convert those into an SVG. This basically turns a 2D image into a 3D object very easily, and can be done online for free. Then import these into Tinkercad, and change the different widths of each layer, and you got yourself a flower that has depth and texture. Now that's what I'm talking about. This is a much needed improvement because it makes the flower more sturdy because it's thicker and makes it easier to paint because all the pixels are defined. Of course, if you're scared of the SVGs and PNGs and photo editing, you can actually just do this in Tinkercad by yourself, like I'm doing right here with the Wither Rose. When that's all done, the pot was made the same way, and in fact, I made a ton of other plants because there's a lot of plants to put in pots in Minecraft. All that's left now is to print them. Three D printing is easy if you have a three D printer, but if you don't, you can visit the Etsy store that I mentioned before and purchase a plain Minecraft flower pot, which is cheaper than the other options. But getting a 3D printer itself isn't that expensive either. We'll be printing this in two pieces, flower and pot due to size constraints of my printer, and because of supports. Supports are important because 3D prints can't print on midair if you didn't know. Automatic supports are iffy in my opinion, so I decided to make my own instead. Of course, not all of you desire to deal with modeling a flower. Luckily, there's an easy solution because I already modeled all the flowers and they're easy to download on Etsy. It comes in a package of 10 different flowers and even pre-supported, so it's really easy to print. All it costs is just a single dollar. It's almost as absurd as villager prices, I know. But if you're not able to buy anything online, you can go on Sketchfab instead, and all my models are free on Sketchfab. But the only problem is that Sketchfab doesn't allow you to make models that are downloadable in different files and pieces. So that's why when you download it from this website, it won't be pre-supported or split up. Either way, all I really want is for people to make some better Minecraft flowers, and hopefully this video helps you do so. Unfortunately, 3D printing isn't perfect, but honestly, this is incredibly smooth already. To achieve this, I printed it at a 0.04 layer height, which took two days, but I'd rather have a printer work harder than me. Cleanup becomes much easier, done with a knife and some files. To add some color, we're going to paint it like in the other YouTube videos. I always use acrylic paints which are super cheap, but uh, I advise you not to put your paint on Amazon packaging. Better options include an old piece of wood, or better yet, a Pringles cap, or even a plastic cup. All that matters is that you get something that the paint won't really stick to.
The main hard part is mixing the right colors, which takes actual experience. I suggest opening the original texture on your computer and using it as a reference. Some tips I can give you is to make sure to shake your paints before you use them. And also, you should definitely paint the top pixels before the lower pixels. This is because it makes it easier to paint the edges of the pixels instead of just painting all the tops of it. As you can see here, I decided to completely overpaint this shade because it was slightly different from the reference. Color mixing is no joke, uh, it's even hard after several years of learning how to paint. Also, if you haven't noticed, I'm painting the flowers and the pots in a random order because once I paint one object, it has to dry, so then I'm just doing them all differently to maximize my efficiency. Honestly, painting is not easy. Different paints cover better than others, and some paints dry so much darker than they do when they're liquid. Making your own Minecraft flower pots can be pretty frustrating at times. But despite me criticizing other people about their flowers, and me being pretty critical about my own flowers, in the end, it's supposed to be a fun and relaxing activity. So if you ever get time to make one of these, just be sure to put on some Minecraft music and enjoy yourself. As a final touch, you can add a protective coating to prevent damage to your paint job. I decided to use what I always use, a matte polyurethane coat, which is a clear plastic that isn't glossy and basically makes your paint invincible. With a lot of effort and know-how, you can make basically any Minecraft flower and liven up your own household. You can choose the right color for you to match your aesthetic. And of course, it might not be the best the first time you tried it, but it's definitely worth it. Looking at it now, it's pretty much 90% accurate to the game. Unfortunately, I lied. You can never get 100% accurate Minecraft flowers because in real life, we have to abide by physics. And in Minecraft, well, this is a little odd. Just uh, keep it angled like this. Perfect! Either way, I encourage you to try to make your own Minecraft flowers. All the resources to do so are in the description below. So check out my Etsy shop, I'd appreciate it. Minecraft is one of my favorite games and I would just simply love to see more people do more with the video game and make more fun. And as always, thank you all for watching.